Okay, so what we're going to do is look at a problem involving infection rates and see what kind of questions we can answer about it. So what we have here is a disease that has an infection rate of 0.4%, which basically just means 0.4% of the people get it, and the remaining do not. Then we know that of those who have it, a half a percent test negative, so that's what we call a false negative, and of those who do not have it, 1% test positive, which we call a false positive. So the best way to organize this information is to look at a tree diagram, because what you notice is we have steps. The information highlighted in green here depends on whether or not the person has a disease. So we start with, does the person have the disease? And we know that 0.4% of the people do, so that means that this is happening with probability 0.004. Now that automatically means that the remaining people which is 0.996 of the people, or 99.6%, however you want to interpret that, do not have the disease. So that fills our first branch of the tree diagram. And just so you notice, if we were to add these two numbers together, we would get one. And that is true for any individual branch on a tree diagram, any individual collection of branches, that is. So now let's move over to if they have the disease. So if they have the disease, we know that... Uh, let's see, 0.5% test negative. So that means right here we have a 0 0.005. They have the disease, but they still test negative, which means if they have the disease, that means that 0.995 or 99.5% test positive. Now, what if they do not have the disease? Well, if they don't have the disease, the information tells us that 1% still managed to test positive. So that's 0.01. And that means that 0.99 of that group, or 99% of that group, tests negative. So what kind of information do we get out of this? Well, what we can do is, remember with a tree diagram, we multiply along the branches to get the probabilities that both events happen. So this first one here would be, has the disease and tests positive. So if we were to multiply those two numbers together, we would have 0 0.00398. And if we want to know how many have the disease but test negative, we would multiply 0 0.004 and 0 0.005 together, and that would give us 0 0.00002. Now, just look at these two numbers right here. Looking at those two, notice they add up to 0 0.004. So what we're doing is looking at how that 0 0.004 that have the disease break up. Most of the 0 0.004 test positive, thankfully, and very little, it looks like, of the um, people who have the disease test negative. So the same can be done for down here. So let's look at the ones who do not have the disease. Well, 1% of the 0.996 do not have the disease and manage to test positive, so multiplying those two together, we would end up with 0 0.00996. And if we were to multiply together, so does not have the disease and test negative, that again should be a fairly large portion of the whole thing. I am not sure why I keep going to erase mode here but that would be 0, 0.0, I'm sorry, no zero, 0 0.98604. And again, if we were to add those two numbers together, as we're gonna see in a little bit, that should add up to the 0 0.996 because that's telling us how the 0 0.996 breaks up. So one other way to organize this information is to go into a table format. So we know, well, let's, Let's, let's start with what we know for sure here right now. Um, the point 00398 is where it has disease and test positive. So the has disease and test positive crowd is right here, 00398. And the has disease and test negative group is the 0 0.00002. And if you notice, if we add those together... I'm not mathing well today, and that's not good if I'm a math teacher, right? There we go. 
So notice that that again is the probability of having the disease. So that again, that just further tells us that that is how everything is breaking up. So if they test positive and have no, and do not have the disease, that's the 00996. And this is the 0 0.98604, no disease and test negative. And sure enough, if we were to add these together, we would get 0 0.996, which is what we should get. So notice if I add the rows, to, or if I add the two entries in the bottom row together, we get one, representing that this whole thing is just pieces of a pie, right? But now the new information that we get is that we're able to figure out, well, gee, how many test positive overall, or I should say what proportion, and what proportion tests negative overall. So if we were to add the two items in the first row, the prob that probability would be 0 0.01394, and the other one would be 0 0.98606. So here is a question or two that we can answer based off of this information. Let's say someone gets a positive test result. So if someone tests positive, what is the probability that they have the disease? So that's a different kind of question. Well, if somebody tests positive, that means that we're in this category right here, right? So that means we're only looking out of the 0 0.01394. And given that, so given that they tested positive, how many of them or what proportion of them actually have the disease? Well, that's this number right here, the 0 0.00398. And if we were to compute that, we would get 0 0.2855, which is a which is 28.55%. So that's not a very accurate result because that means that if you test positive, that means you have less than a 30% chance of actually having the disease. But we have seen this before with some previous flu seasons. Now let's answer the flip side. What if you test negative? So if someone tests negative. What is probability that they do not have the disease? So, and that someone looks awful, so I'm going to fix that. So similar kind of deal here. I'm just gonna change up the color here. I'm gonna make it red for do not. So if someone does not so if someone tests negative, rather, that means we're in this category, which means I'm only focusing on that part of it. And what portion of that actually do not have the disease? Well, that is the point nine eight six zero four. Notice those numbers are very close to each other, which means this probability is very close to one. In fact, if we compute that out, we get point nine 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 nine. 7972, and I'm sure that keeps going. So what we're talking about is 99.997972 and more percent. So we're almost certain. Okay, so basically, if you test negative, you can pretty much be certain that you don't have the disease. There's a very, very, very small chance that you actually do. But the negative test result is definitely more reliable than the positive test result. Now you might be asking yourself, why did this happen? Well, if you look at the information, most people do not actually have the disease. And even though the false positive rate is very small, we're still talking about a very small percentage of a very large group of people. So they're ruining it for all the other positive test results. You know, false positives make up a good portion of all the positive test results. So that's why that we have such a small, we'll call it a confidence rate. If you test positive, how confident are you that you have the disease? and so on. So hopefully you found this video helpful and I thank you for watching and I hope this helps the whole tracking these rates make more sense. This is what happens in our world a lot and it's a, the fun is just learning how to interpret everything. So again, I thank you for watching and